everyone, it's Carissa here from Black Dog School of Yoga. Today I have a video that's designed to help relieve your body of any aches and pains after you've been shoveling. So we're here based in Denver. We had a huge snowstorm um, this past weekend and I spent probably um, five or six hours shoveling yesterday, helping a bunch of my neighbors get out. Um, so I went home last night and did a few poses to help my body um, be able to be back in its good functioning order today. So I have a couple blocks, but also I'm going to show you some options, different options. These are just a couple um, towels. You can grab beach towels. Um, they're a little bit sturdier than blankets, so I recommend them over blanket. If you do have kind of that traditional yoga blanket that's a little bit stiffer, you can also use that. So I'm going to show you um, a couple setups. First, I'm going to show you the blocks, but then I'm going to go to the blankets and rest. So one of the biggest things with shoveling is we have a tendency to round and hunch over. So the front line of the body is collapsed. So it's all about opening up the front line of the body and restoring some alignment to the spine. So in this two block setup, you're gonna have one block on the medium setting and one block on the high setting. Now the bottom edge of this block is gonna go on the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. And be really mindful, if it's low in your low back, it's not gonna feel good. If it's too high up, then defeating the purpose. So you really wanna find place a place where you're right on the bottom tips of the shoulder blades and then you'll come back and place your head and you can um, alter the setting of the, the height of this block if you want to go lower you have a bigger back then it's totally up to you if you don't have any blocks or if you only have one block then work with this blanket setup and I'm putting two blankets in here but you can also play with the thickness of the blankets and then I'm just gonna roll them up so I get this nice big thick roll and same thing. I'm going to put the bottom tips of my shoulder blades right on the bottom edge of the roll and open up. Mm. Wonderful. Then a couple options with your legs. You can have your legs straight. You can have your knees bent. You can have your feet, um, soles of the feet together, knees out wide. If you have extra support, you can put that underneath your knees. I'm just going to keep my legs nice and long and make sure that they're active so that the ankles are flexed and the soles of the, uh, the toes are pointing up towards the ceiling. Then I'm going to grab opposite elbows and really make sure that the pointy part of your elbow fits nicely into your palm. And then I'm just going to take my arms up overhead. And then you're just going to rest here. This puts the lungs on the front side of the body. So find the breath all the way deep from the belly and then all the way up to the very tip of the lungs, the lobes of the lungs. There's a natural tendency when we arrive in a pose, especially if you've been hunched or rounded over shoveling or in probably an awkward position that your body is not quite used to, then when we put our body back in alignment, there's almost a fighting because the body is conditioned to be in a certain way. And so we're almost a little bit of a fight to open it back up. But instead of fighting, I encourage you to just surrender. So see how heavy you can make yourself onto the blanket or the blocks. If you're in the two block setting, then you can let your head be heavier into the block underneath your head. If you're in this variation with your arms overhead, grabbing opposite elbows, then wrap the outer armpits in as if you're trying to make a cup shape out of your armpits. And that'll just keep the shoulder joint safe. And then be sure to switch, direct, uh, switch uh, the grip of the forearm. So you put the opposite forearm on top, grip opposite elbows, and then come back to that. And once you switch, see if you can find the literal uh, organ, the literal lobe of the lungs, and push them higher towards the ceiling so you get an even bigger arc. And all the while, you continue to breathe, and we'll just be here for a few more breaths. And then release 
the arms down. Either way, if you're in the blanket or the block setup, just keep your head uh, back behind you and then roll off to one side, right or left. If you have the blanket roll underneath, you can kind of push yourself up, take it out to the side, come all the way back down. You can, if you have the blocks, just knock them over and then come back to neutralize the spine. So coming all the way back and down, reach your arms overhead. Try and get the backs of the hands to touch, the thumbs and the pinky side. And then once again, roll over to the right or left side and come all the way up and around. We're gonna do some wrist work here because that is a really big um, culprit in, in pain after shoveling is a lot of, you know, we're not used to using our wrists like that. Um, some uh, soreness up into the forearms. So I want you guys to find a tabletop position. Make sure that your wrists are stacked under your shoulders. Your knees are hips width distance and the tops of your feet are down. Then reach your right arm forward, swing it all the way up and around and set your wrist so, or set your fingers so they point backward to you. And make sure that your wrists are in line, your right wrist is in line with your left, that you haven't moved your hand up or back, that they're right in line, wrist crease to wrist crease. Good. And if this is like super ouchy, way too much, you can take your blanket or take um, out one of the rolls and just put your wrist on the blanket roll that also can help with that. Make sure that you bend the elbow, especially if you're a hyperextender. You don't wanna lock out your joints. And then you're just gonna swivel the hips around. And you're just gonna move around that wrist joint and start to work out all of the crankiness from shoveling. This is really good for um, wrist injuries, especially if you have any scar tissue to work out some of that. I've had some pretty gnarly wrist injuries, and of course I've waited um, until this is actually uh, available for me. Um, there's obviously a healing process that needs to happen, but then I get right into this and start to work out all of um, that scar tissue that's about to settle in, so really good for that. And make sure that you switch directions. And then release from that. Come out the same way you came in. Reach your arm all the way around so you're rotating from the shoulder joint, not just from the wrist. And then we'll go ahead and do the same with the left. Sweep it all the way back and around. Set the wrist down. And again, make sure the left wrist is right in line with the right, that you haven't moved the hand up or back towards your knee. Bend the elbow and then start to swivel around. Wonderful. Make sure you switch directions if you haven't already. center, unflip the wrist, and then pause with both wrists flipped the right way. Find the center of each palm, press down. Imagine that you're trying to lift the shoulders away from the wrist, and just take a moment to find the center. Then walk your hands back toward your knees and flip so that the backs of the hands are down and your fingertips are pointing towards you. Backs of the hands are down, fingertips pointing towards you. And then go ahead and step the knees right onto the hands. And really make sure that the knees are on the fleshy part, um, the pads of the, like the thumb pad, and the fleshy part of the hand rather than the fingers or the bones that won't feel so good. And then you're just gonna sit your hips back towards your heels to whatever degree you can. And then imagine like you're doing a cow pose. So your belly comes down, your pubic bone comes down, and your heart comes forward, your gaze comes up. And then exhale as you come forward, you're gonna round your spine and like you're trying to pull your wrists away from the earth. Like they're going in two directions, so you're creating space in the wrist, shoulders away from the wrist, and round the spine, puff the upper back, and then you're gonna inhale, Take it the opposite direction. So sit your hips back toward your heels. Belly comes through, heart comes through, lungs come through the frame of the arms, look up. And then exhale round, come forward, stack shoulders over wrists, and then pull. So you create some space in the wrist, and then just 
Do that a few more times. Maybe scoot it up, maybe slow it down. And then gently release from that step, one knee off and then the other. Again, returning to center, so try not to like flail the wrists or fingers. Come all the way back to a center position. Find the center of the palm, press down to lift up. And then one last one here. I'm gonna turn so you guys can see it from a different direction. You're gonna make a fist like this, place it on your mat. Back of the hand on the mat, wrist down on the mat. And then I'm just gonna use my left hand to encourage that to stay down, to encourage the right hand to stay down, and then just straighten the right arm and you'll get a really magnificent and equally awful <laughs> stretch through the um, top of the wrist and all the way up the arm there. The natural tendency as you straighten is for the fingertips to uncurl, which is why you really wanna keep that nice tight fist and the left hand encourages that fist to stay there. And then you'll release, take it to the other side. So make a fist with the left hand. The right hand comes on top to encourage not only the wrist to stay down, but also for the fist to stay intact as you start to straighten the left arm. and then gently release that. One more time, come back to a tabletop, find the center of your palms, press down to lift up, lifting your shoulders away from your wrists. And then the last couple poses here. So another big thing in shoveling is the QLs, which are these muscles that run um, right next to the spine and the lower back on either side. Those often get tight from shoveling. So we're just gonna do a little QL stretch. So bring your left foot in and your right leg comes along. And then from here, you're gonna bring your fingertips to either side of your right leg. And I really want this right knee to be bent. So you're either going to grab the blanket roll and put it underneath your knee, or you, if you have the two blocks set up, you'll put the block underneath your knee and that it just encourages the knee to stay bent. When the knee stays bent, then we have more room to play in the pelvis because I want the pubic bone to come down and the tailbone to roll up. So you're not sitting heavy in the tailbone and just making this aggravation in the um, low back even worse. So find that knee bent, ankles flex so your toes point up, roll the pubic bone down and the tailbone comes up, and then rotate your chest so that it faces your toes and hands on either side of your right leg. And then you can take it a little bit further if you have the two block set up. Great, if you don't, no biggie. Take your hand to the outside of your foot, left hand to the outside of your right foot, and then your fingertips come back behind you or fingertips on blocks, either way. Try and get your left ribs to meet the right inner thigh. Left ribs to the inner thigh, and then you get a nice twist. Then to lengthen, reach the lungs forward, like you're trying to get your lungs to reach your knee, and you'll get a nice stretch through the QL there. And then we'll take it opposite direction. So you have the block or the blanket roll. Go ahead and put your elbow right there on the block or the blanket roll. And then you can reach under, and if you can, you can grab underneath your heel. And then you'll twist the opposite direction, take your arm overhead. And imagine you're trying to reach past the foot instead of down towards the foot. Imagine you're trying to reach up and past the foot. Now these right ribs are gonna try, are gonna wanna get stuck. So your job is to bring the right ribs around as you reach, reach, reach. Imagine someone has a hold of your left fingertips and they're pulling you forward and you get a really nice stretch and release. And any of these poses you guys can be held for a lot, lot longer. And beneficial if you do. And then release, take your left arm back, use your left arm to pull you all the way up, and then you'll switch to the other side. So drawing your right foot in, and then your left leg comes out. Again, block or blanket. I do want something under the knee to encourage the knee to be bent so we can play more in the pelvis. Roll the pubic bone down, the tailbone comes up, flex the ankle and the left toe so the left toe's 
point up and fingertips on either side of your left leg. Start a little bit of a rotation so that your heart rotates toward your toes. And then you can take it even deeper by reaching your right hand and grabbing the outside of your left foot. The left fingertips come back behind your hips, so it helps you twist. Aim for the right ribs or the right lung to meet the inner thigh here on the left side. And then reach forward so you get a stretch all the way on that right side. And this is the second time I've done this. I did this last night after shoveling. And again, this morning right now, is I'm teaching this and it feels equally good. So it's kind of just the body gets really tight and wound up and it's almost this like unraveling process of um, all of the bad habits we did in our snow shoveling. And then release, we'll take it the opposite direction. So the elbow comes to the inside of the knee on the block or the blanket roll. And then the hand reaches under and clasps for the heel on the left side. Then reach your right arm all the way up. And again, instead of trying to reach down for the toes, I want you to reach up and over like you're extending past the toes. These left ribs, they're gonna wanna get stuck. So pull the left ribs around. And if you even wanna use your right hand to pull the left rib ribs around, you can do that. And then reach. Then go ahead and release. Take your right hand back behind you and use it to pull yourself all the way up. That's all I got for you guys today. Um, you can do this as many times as you want. Like I told you, I did this last night and again this morning and filming and my body is just continuing to feel better and better unraveling from all of that snow shoveling. If you guys like the video, um, hit the button below, hit the um, subscribe button if you guys haven't subscribed to us. We have lots of videos coming of ways that you can integrate yoga into your life. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.